finally got around to doing this review, I put it off so long. Oh my god. Because I didn't know what I was doing. The book is called Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schaefer. This book actually came out in 2018. So, you know, it's not, it's not like an up and coming thing. But I wanted to do this review because the last and final book in the series is coming out next month. I'm just really hyped. I mean, when I first read this book, within five minutes I had bought the next book because I wanted to keep on reading. And then I was totally, totally devastated to find out the third book hadn't come out because I thought it had. So I want to talk about this book, kind of near and dear to my heart. It's about fucked up people. And I am a fucked up people. Basic premise, there are uh, not humans called unnaturals. And our main girl is one of them, along with her mother. But um, the way they make their living is by hunting down other unnaturals, chopping them up into little bits and selling their parts on the black market. So the main character, Nita, uh, she is just in love with dissecting these things. Loves it. It hurts her life's passion. And you get introduced to her... Um, Loading up a, a Disney playlist to listen to while she can like chop open this dude, this like middle-aged dude in like a, a suit Disney dissection. And then very quickly, her mother brings back an unnatural that isn't dead yet, which is very strange. And our girl Nita, she can't handle. She tries to handle very valiantly, but she ultimately can't handle. And she sets the, the little kid free. He's not really a little kid. How old is he? He's like her age. So she springs him, gives him her savings and her cell phone, sends him off onto a bus into a safe country. And then her mom, who is an abuser, abusive mama, I forget her name. I don't need to know her name. She's an abuser. She's obviously pissed. And they go into hiding because, you know, they just sit a prisoner, a kidnapped victim for you. I mean, of course the police are going to come after them. Duh. So they go into hiding, and while they're in hiding, Miss Nita gets kidnapped. And then, irony of irony, she ends up on the black market instead. Not only is she in that situation, she's in that situation on the worst black market on the planet. Mercado de la Muerte. 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 Now, while she's there, she doesn't know what happened her actually her first uh thought is that her mother sold her and like if that's not believable oh my god that woman so our second main character is named kavit you know my brain keeps on trying to say covid like the disease because that's how his name is written but i'm like 99.9% .9 sure it's actually kavit he's the eye in the sky he watches all the cages with the people in them. He makes sure they're not escaping. He's in charge of feeding them and turning on the shower when they need the shower. And uh, basically, he, he's the guy who goes in and like grabs them so they could chop pieces off of them and sell it. And the reason that he got this job is because he's also an unnatural that lives off of the pain of others. So uh, it's like his food. If he doesn't freaking torture someone or is in the presence of someone experiencing severe pain he will die thing with our girl nita though she can turn off her ability to feel pain and she could heal herself a man kavit ain't getting much out of her and that really does not sit well with him i don't mean like oh he's like pissed off i mean he's like actually disturbed like oh shit i don't wanna i don't wanna torture this person that's not gonna feel pain this is kind of fucked up i don't like this and let me just say that, me personally, when he was introduced, my enthusiasm for the book went down. Because I was like, oh shit. They're introducing a douchebag and she is going to fall in love with him. And it's going to be one of those weird abusive things where it's like, oh, he treats her like absolute garbage and is murdering people and blah, blah, blah. But she loves him. I mean, the way he was introduced into the story was um, him being ordered into the cage to, like, carve a piece off of her. And, oh my god, was I pleasantly surprised to find out that she's more fucked up than he is. 
I mean, normally you would expect that story to go in a completely different direction. This is a BFF situation of murderer psycho people. I'm down for that. So if that's something you're worried about, it doesn't go that way. And let's just be real. Not even Bones, this book, has zero romance in it. Like, none. None at all. And I was totally not expecting that. You know, sometimes when, like, a guy is introduced as a love interest, and they end up not being a love interest, which, let's be real, hardly ever fucking happens. But when that happens, usually, I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck? I've been promised something. Like, I know I'm ace, and, like, this is not really my area. But I'm, like, very disappointed here. I was not disappointed in this at all. This was great. I mean, I can't go into that. That's spoilers. Obviously, if you are someone who um, is not cool with gore, this is not the this is not the the book for you. She did not like go into detail on dissections or like serious injuries and stuff. I mean, even even when they were chopping that kid's ear off, like it wasn't horrific. Although, let's be clear, in the second book, this is not a spoiler, but in the second book, there's a situation with a cheese grater that made me throw the book down. <sighs> Oof, man. <laughs> so yeah, that's the basic premise before we go into like spoilers of me going too far into the story. She dissects people, she frees a kid, she gets kidnapped, ends up on the black market, has to escape the black market, meets the dude who feeds off pain. Now let's be real, my first impression of Nita was that she has serious issues, and uh, she does. She is way too okay with too many things. She apparently has not been in school very often, like she has not learned how to socialize with people. So at this point, the only way she knows how to relate to people is if they're dead. She straight up like says that she prefers dead people and it's made pretty clear that, like, even though her mother, like, the way that she's freaking abused emotionally, possibly physically, it's made pretty clear that she has chosen to stay with her mother because her mother is the one that's traveling. And that means, like, if she's with the mother, she can dissect a wider variety of things. I like how it can shove something really disturbing in your face that she does. And then, like, a page later reconvince you that like she's not really um that messed up like it's easy it's easy to forget that she's not like a normal girl and she's just been thrust into that situation it's really easy to forget that she is messed up it's two terrible people finding th friendship through their shared terribleness would i want to know them in real life no but they are fun to know on paper. And the fact that they're kind of disasters, they're, they're terrible people, but they're also disasters who mess up everything. The fact that they are disasters is hilarious. They're just bumbling through this very serious situation with very serious things going on. And it kind of it kind of adds that little bit, endears the terrible people to your heart. It's done very well, I believe. I even think that there are many, many, many people who would read this book and not think that they are bad people. That, that is a little disturbing to think of. You know, you know, if there is a girl that's like, oh my god, Kavit is so hot, I would love to have a boyfriend just like him. I feel like he's a better choice than some other people. One thing that was kind of cool was how Nita and Kavit kind of mirrored each other in their situation. It was kind of like Nita was at level one with a level one abusive female figure above her. And Kavit was at level 10 with like a level 10 abusive female figure. <laughs> and it was kind of interesting, like Nita, she pretty much, she chose her level one situation. She could have stayed with her father in, what was it, Chicago? She could have stayed with her father in Chicago and, you know, been safer etc etc whereas Kavit he did not really have that choice he was in that situation because he had to be in that situation or he would die I don't know if that's a spoiler is that a spoiler even down to um Anita feeding the child that she freed like even that's a little mirrored I didn't notice that until I reread it and you know what I should have noticed in the beginning 
is how much they're focusing on this one type of unnatural. Like, it, it was, like, reading it again, I noticed how much was, like, foreshadowed. And, um, made me feel kind of dumb. But maybe it was just done well. The writing in this book, I mean, it's not distracting. It's not bad. It presented no barriers between you and the story. Like, sometimes writing super bad has got typos and you're just like so engrossed in how crappy it is that you can't enjoy the story and then sometimes the writing is so good and you're like oh my god this writing is amazing and even then it's kind of taking you out of the story with its sheer awesomeness maybe that doesn't make sense maybe that's never happened to you but it happened to me i'm not really sure what else i could say that's not spoilery i wanted to make a non-spoiler review there's actually a character I haven't even talked about yet, because I feel like her entire existence is a spoiler. Oh, and by the way, this is a webcomic too. I have not I have not read the webcomic. I kind of don't want the image of the characters in my head. I did see, I saw a picture of Nidza and Kavit, and then I saw that uh, they made him taller in the comic. What is that shit? He's not taller. That was one of the reasons I liked him. I was like, oh my god, this author made the love interest shorter than the freaking girl. Are you serious? That's awesome. That never happens. And then the webcomic was like, sorry, that's too, uh, that's too edgy for us. We need to make him tall and dark and mysterious and all that shit. So anyway, thank you for tuning in to my first foray into this book reviewing situation that I have not planned for at all as I'm sure you were able to tell. Stream of consciousness is not a good idea if you have ADHD. So anyway, I will link to the, the Goodreads for each book and when you go there it'll show you each store that has it. See you next week for a actual writing video. I should open the book on the computer. Look, I am filming. I am filming this video. And I stopped to play Clicker Heroes. Look at this. Look at me. This is the concentration that I have. It's getting to the point where I'm making so many notes during the day that I don't understand some of them. Like, what is this? What does that mean? What was I thinking? All right, so we're going to do this. We're doing this. We're doing this. So I can stop stressing about it. Doing it live. It's described as Dexter meets Victoria Schwab. And I have no idea what Victoria Schwab is. Let's Google that right now. Oh. I know who that is. I never see her name written as Victoria. I'm keeping that in. I just realized I still have my uh headset in. Get rid of that. Oops, I missed the table even though it's right in front of me. No, oh my god, I sound so much better with the thing not in my ear. <laughs> and then that mofo. Oh wait, I can't say that. That's a major spoiler almost. <laughs> Chef est un homme de famille germanique qui fait vachement. This is not helping. Look at that. Because my hair is all going gray in this one area, it looks like I'm going bald. Just like right here in this line. Doesn't that look like I'm going bald? I fucking hate that so much. That's what I get for inheriting genes in this family. We all go gray very early. Like, I started getting gray hair when I was 11. <laughs>